All right, Farmer Chris, we are back for a few points from perfect. We're tried again, huh? We are, uh, we are down our co-host. Our, our Mr. Jason has, uh, well, we could probably do a whole podcast about what's going on, <laughs> what's going on Jason. <laughs> uh, he's forgot where Indiana is. I lately. think he has. He's stuck in Pennsylvania. We don't have the fancy board because yep. my... I tried to use Gunner's headphones. Oh, Gunner's headphones. And Gunner's huh? headphones are not working right, so we're uh, we're hoping the audio is good. We're depending on the the, the Go. Um, so I, I love GoPros. GoPros. I don't have the most faith in them. Yep. In long term recording. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we might have to. Uh... There may be some beeping and some cussing before this is all done. So, but we're going to try to cover a topic that uh, we get asked a lot, a lot about on YouTube. Yep. And I think we should preface this with uh, neither one of us are experts. We are not experts. You so. haven't went to, uh, did you go to farming school? What is farming school? I went to Purdue for a year. For a year? And uh, they asked me not to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so the that education I got. That automatically <laughs> means you're not successful, well, I'm right? not successful. So no, I'm not, no drainage school. Uh, no I school. went to uh, two years of college to be a diesel mechanic. That's nothing to do with all. Well, it helps on the engine part of putting okay. it in, but not the ground part. But yep. anyways, most of our most of our numbers, facts, um, should we cover a little bit for people maybe not know our our relationship? We can maybe we can. back up a little bit. So, so you've got uh, never we've done it before, but uh, the first year, but this is the third year of this. Yeah, so. we got a lot of new people now, Chris. Yep, as yeah, you you're probably, t- probably well know. So uh, I guess this is going on. We've kind of known each other our whole lives. Our whole life, yeah. You're good friends with uh, the neighbor up here, Logger Way, Locker Partners all through school. But uh, we really kind of become good friends, what, about five years ago? Uh, Four or five years ago, yeah. Because you farm here locally in the community. Uh, I was, the construction company I was part of was building you guys a new church. In Branchville, yep, new church. Yeah. And uh, that right after we built that church is when I kind of transitioned over to heavier to excavating than building. And uh, you had a relationship with the previous excavator. Yep, which yep. Was we had a good guy. We had a good excavator. Yep. He's uh, kind of got, I guess, uh, Wayne kind of got for, more focused on the uh, hog barns and the turkey barns. He? he does. He does a lot of a lot of work for the turkey barns now. Uh, so you asked me to do a few small jobs on the farm. Kind of took off from there and uh, kind of an icebreaker and test run for both of us. Yeah, and your farm's growing. My company's growing. We've just yeah. kind of been on the same same path together, and we've been pretty good friends ever since. Yep. So. With that being said, uh, everybody always wants to know how many acres Chris farms. I'm going to answer for you. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you comfortable giving a range like between a thousand and three thousand? That's a big range. It's a big range. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're pushing close to the three thousand mark, really close to the three thousand mark. Right, so and we might even break that this year. So you guys cover a lot of ground for yeah. just uh, basically it's your you and your brother, the two main ones. Yep. And then uh, dad is semi retired. But he says semi retired means we put him in a semi and he goes <laughs> all the time. So. <laughs> But no, he's uh, you semi-retired. Think we, you think we could ever get a podcast with your dad and get him to behave long enough? I don't know if we could or not. <laughs> I better leave the room. <laughs> we'll see the was the famous Temple Temper come yep, out. Yep, yep. And then so, we've got one part-time hired hand. It's, yeah. I mean, really part-time. He's so. actually uh, come along pretty decent. I know he, he spends a lot of time in the truck. But yep. The whole point of that conversation is you guys cover a whole lot of ground. Yeah, when I say the acres, you know, 3,000 acres, um, that's the row crops and the hay. Now, to put this into perspective a little bit, 3,000 acres, people that farm in the Plain states or the other parts of Indiana, that's not much property. That may not be much. But how many parcels of ground is that 3,000 acres? I wrote uh, land rent checks on the 1st of December. I wrote 82 checks. So that's 82 different fi- 82 different landowners. I, yeah. So I deal with. what would you say your average field side is? 20 acres? It was 8.3 until we picked up the farm in Rome. Yeah. So that's going to bump the whole operation up, but uh, we're still pod pushing 8. that 12 8.3 acres. 8.3 acres average. average field size. That is crazy. You pull in with a 90 foot sprayer or a 30 foot planter, you make one round and fold oh, it up and one. move on to the next one. Which, if you guys follow the YouTube channels, while you while we do a lot of openings and accesses uh-huh. and clearings, because you guys move and mobilize so much, the faster you can get it out of the field, the better off you are. Yeah, if we can get landowners uh, adjoining each other, knock out an old fence row, or just even make a hole in there, so we ain't got to take head off, we ain't got to fold up planters. And we, we won't go too far down the other route, yep. but that's the grain operation. Yep. You guys are also uh, cattle. 
120 head of cows. And then uh, well, along with the cows comes hay, straw. Hay, straw, and we're running 2,400 head of pigs. It's a lot. Yeah. And you're, uh, I still think your best YouTube videos yet, your first one you did. The very it. first one. I never even talked on <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> <laughs> Had an old feed tank at the hog barn. He sets the camera on the front of the uh, side by side, walks out, he mans the thing over, gets back, turns the camera on, drives yep. off. <laughs> and if anybody wants to see that, that's on a Farmer Chris YouTube yep, channel. Yeah, so you'll get checked. I will try to link that down below if you guys. Uh, you don't post as regular as what I do or some nope. of the other ones do, but you get a couple videos out here. I try to get a couple out of here. Yep. I've got footage recorded. Just editing is the biggest thing for me. It, so. it, that's well. I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but that's why my videos lag so far behind. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I may go a week without filming. I may go a couple of weeks without editing, depending on what's going on. And by by having those videos out, I can I can be busy and still get a video and still, still get, a, get video. a good quality video out. You know, you yeah. see some of these guys just try to throw something up for a video. They're forced to throw something together. And if I ever get to the point where I can't keep up with that the other day, I'm gonna go back to every third day. Every, yep. In a heartbeat. But fortunately, we've had enough content to. Uh, Keep it going. So, all right, talking circles here, but uh, circling back around to what everybody wants to know about is field tile. Why do we do it? How do we determine where it's going to go? And what is the return on investment? <laughs> I'm going to let you jump off of, let's start off on the why. The why for us is uh, we're very rolling hills. So, I'm going to say 75% of our tile is ditches. Um, trying to get ditches, grass waterways in the field that we're having to either go around or pick up and go over. So we're paying rent on, we pay rent on our grass waterways. So for people that maybe not are really diverse in the tile world, there's basically two different types of tiling in my mind. One is like pattern tiling. Pattern tile. Pattern a... tiles, what you see them do like up around uh, Zach Johnson, Millennial mm -hmm. Farmers, a lot of pattern tiling. They do do some pattern tiling around here, uh, out in Iowa, a lot yep. of those guys yep. pattern tile. I think Brian's Farming Videos has done some pattern, pattern tile. tile. What they're trying to do is lower the water table. The water the field. table down, yep. So they're trying to take the water table, which is how high the surface water or the groundwater is in the field, and lower it. Yep. So what Chris is alluding to is we have a lot of hillsides. We're on slopes. And to keep those fields from eroding, you leave a grass waterway, which you don't plant, leave gla yep. grass. But what we found over time is as you farm up to that grass waterway, the ditch goes from the center of the grass waterway to the edges. Yeah, the grass gets taller, it acts as a buffer, and that silt comes that grass and then starts making little dams. So now you get two ditches 10 foot apart going down each side of the waterway. So then your grass waterway just keeps getting keeps bigger getting and bigger. And you're playing rent on that whether well, yes. you can raise a crop off of yes. it or not. So what uh, what we do a lot of times with the, I guess you call it the dam and riser method. Uh, the dry dams, yeah. So that is controlling surface water, not yes. groundwater. So we'll take a pipe, go up through there, put a riser in, put a dry dam in. That basically turns it into a reservoir. Yep, small reservoir. And you can plant pretty much We what, plant right up over them. 90% of that? Yeah, as long as you don't knock the... Uh, carrot down <laughs> which is the only risers we get to call them carrots field uh, carrots we plant them right up against them and up over the dam if, if the dam's made there's two different types of dams too we make some that's pretty steep that we don't right. even farm you just go around them then we make some uh, rolling dams that we can we plant right up over them um, so basically that dam acts as a reservoir holds the water and then that carrot control releases it into yep. the pipe gets down um, so a couple things it controls erosion yes the dam catches whatever settlement erosion you do yep. have, and then you can plant that entire right away. Yes. Um, and you may have some numbers there I don't know about, but so without ever actually going and picking up a new field over the course of the last five years, what have we maybe taken out 20, 30 acres of right of ways? Uh, the very first farm we did, um, I hate to mention the name, but uh, North right. Interstate on the KC okay. farm. Yep. Uh, that was the first tile job we ever did. Big one, yeah. Big one. I think that was about 15,000 feet we put in. Yeah, and we dug that all in. We dug it with track hoe. And what work I done, we picked up about three acres on that one farm. What you were paying rent for and I get nothing off of. For. So we took it from a 62-acre farm to a 65-acre farm of plantable acres. So that's just plantable acres, but then by controlling the water, did you gain yield on? We gained yield, but more we gained efficiency because we was making longer passes 
So basically you can plant more acres in less time. Yep. Yeah, we ain't picking up turnaround. We ain't got the round rows going up and around these ditches and then instead of planting 100 feet and picking up, now we can plant 600 feet and then pick up the other end of the field. And that was four years ago? 22, was it spring of 20, I think, maybe. Okay, or so 20, be, or spring of 20 or spring of 19. Yeah, somewhere in there. So you've, you've got a few years yep. on that farm. Because the first year we did it, was it prevent plant? On that, is that what? Because we, we had a little extra time to do it. Uh, yeah, we had some extra time. I don't know what it was. We might have had prevent plant there. Oh, yeah, I remember that there. So, so that's so that's an example of um, controlling surface yep. water. I mean, there was some wet spots on that when we tried to control some groundwater. Yep. Um, but, but you know, to gain fourteen acres or fourteen acres, three acres, you know, we invested fourteen thousand dollars in that farm, in tile and and labor and machinery. So it's going to take a while to pay it back if you count acres but if you count time and i don't know how to figure that time in to right get a return on investment on that type of job that's what makes it uh like on that particular job that's what makes it really hard to put a pinpoint number on it because how do you figure in your efficiency yep how do you figure in how you improve neighboring acres yep i mean it's easy to figure your 3.5 acres and yeah the three re- acres we picked up yeah and do return on that what so but you know we had this farm we've ran this farm since 1997 so we've been there several years i think we're going to be there several years yet so it's an investment i was willing to to make right. for the farm so do you have a number in mind have you decided to tile a farm like i want to be uh paid back in five years or as we get down the list it looks like five years is going to be a, a pretty good number pretty good number yeah. that's kind of the ultimate yep. the ultimate goal um so I don't want to get too far off base here. We just re- this, this brings up a comment I just got okay. here recently. It's our uh, it's our famous tree up here on the Harlan place. Okay. Yep. So oh people- boy. <laughs> yep. So give you guys a little bit of background here. Chris picked up a farm here close to town or close to home, and there was one random poplar tree. Yeah, it was out there by itself. Out in the middle of the field by yeah. itself. Huge tree. Um, what a lot of people didn't catch in the video, which I said, is Logger Wade had actually marked the property for logs. Yeah, they, they and they, they didn't marked, want this tree. They did not want it. it. It was too far gone. There was there there was no value of the tree. Yep. Um, so Wade basically told us push it over, push it along the old woods, and and let it be natural habitat. Yep. So. The guy basically called us idiots for taking the tree down the tree. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of value to that tree. The tree, the tree people. wasn't hurting anything, and all we did was take an oxygen away mm-hmm. from the world and murdered trees and all this, that, and the other. So I wish we had a yield map. I know it's a podcast, but yep. I wish we had a yield map we can show them. So, one, if you leave this random tree in the middle of that field, yep, it's probably taken close to an acre away of useless or farmable you, ground. You know... Uh, it's more than just the trunk of that tree. Because the root base is as big as the top, right. if not bigger sometimes. And we can show yield maps, especially you get into a drought year. You can see where the roots are sucking water out of the ground. So, you know, I think probably probably covered 300 feet oh, circle, yeah. you know, underground. It's not that going around it ain't that hard. My planner, well, we fly aerial fungicide. So now how's the airplane going to treat this field with a big tree? But just the underground root mass, this thing's sucking water away from the crop and nutrients. So The other thing I want to point out is it's not like we're taking this tree out and putting a concrete house there. No. You're putting more plants back. Yes, putting, uh, yeah, there's several plants going. Going back. Is. I mean, between yeah. cover crops and, and then your actual plants. So, I mean, in, in some ways, we're returning it to nature. It's just a more usable form of it's, nature. It's for us. Yeah, it's for ag it, industry. It's it's more usable. Do your, do your corn plants take CO2 and make oxygen? Uh, actually... The Midwest is the biggest CO2 user in the world, just from the corn. It's better than the, the rainforest in really? South America. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know, those, those comments just crack me up because they're so one-sided. On, they are, yeah. It's, and uh, that's what ag is fighting all the way, the whole industry year-round. Uh, you know, I, I can see where they're, I don't want to discredit their thought process i can see where they're coming mm-hmm. from but it's clear they, ha- they have no research or yeah. or have no uh no links to what they're what they're talking about or no education behind yep. their statements <laughs> is, is what i should say so so on that farm you know we talked about tile placement there we was going up ditches and putting dry dams now we do have two farms i got here 
One was a total swamp, nine and a half acres. Oh, is that the Williams one? The Williams. And the other one you did not record, but it's about a 15-acre field that had about a two-acre wet yeah. hole in the middle. Let's talk about Williams' first, because I do have a video on that one. Yeah, you do have a video on and that And I think the name of the video, I'll try to link it in my in this description, but the name of the video is, if this field don't make a believer out of you, no, oh. none of them will. It was a tile job. Yep. Uh, that was... Interesting. That was interesting. That was a swamp. <laughs> that was a swamp hole now. That's the field you got like 10,000 comments saying you just need to plant rice. Plant rice. But you don't plant rice in the mud. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> so You mean more uneducated comments? Yes. Chris? Yes. Uh, so, uh, nine and a half acre field, we put in 872 feet, eight inch, and 1,400 feet, a six inch. Do you mind? I don't even remember. You know much what that cost us? I cost us, cost you. I didn't pay for any of it. It's about $4,000 worth of tile. Four thousand dollars a dollar. And I looked up your bill, it was nineteen hundred dollars. Damn, I'm cheap. Yes, you was on that part. <laughs> so <laughs> that must have been um, the volume discount at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, yep. So you know, I figured uh six thousand dollars investment on that nine and a half acres. We put that one in pretty quick. We were only there what, day and a half. We had a day and a half, yeah. yeah. We had a lot of help, so um so six thousand acres, six thousand dollars, six thousand dollars on nine and a half acres. The first year I planted that farm was twenty nineteen, no tile. It raised fifty three bushel an acre corn. That's that's a loss, right? That's like a total loss. Twenty twenty, no tile, seventy five bushel an acre. Well, that's an improvement. No tile yet. Though. No tile. We put it in the spring of twenty one. Twenty one yielded one hundred fifty nine bushel an acre. Holy cow! Just by putting tile on nine and a half acres. And we did not pattern tile. No. We just had to hit the few yeah, we, uh, spots that was controlled some water. ditches and yep. hits. Like I said, this 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 video is on YouTube if you yep. guys want to see this field. So if you average nineteen and twenty together, twenty one beat those two years by ninety five bushel an acre. Six dollar corn, I got five hundred and seventy dollars an acre benefit out of tile. That's a one year payback. You need some more fields like that. I need more fields like that. So, and you know, then we come back with this year with soybeans and uh, done 56 bushel an acre, which ain't great, but it's no. It but I beans. mean, uh, what 180 to 200 bushel corn is good here. Uh, 180 is good corn. 180 is yeah, good corn, yeah. and then 60 bushel beans is pretty good. Really, really good. So, so 50 I've, in in 21 with the 50, 157 on corn 159, was a yeah. pretty average rainfall year. Yes, it was. Yeah. 22. We were dry. We were dry. Yeah. So that's another people thing always people talk about with tile is you put all that tile on the ground, you have a drought, <laughs> you're yep. going to ruin your crop. But that's not the way it works. No, I mean, you're only dropping the water table to where the tile is. Right. And it you're means getting that that we, excess water. It means that we did not pattern tile. There's still a bunch of water sitting there. So your water table is going to sit right there where that tile is. Right. You know, if we're putting tile... 24 inches deep in. We're controlling the moisture in the top 24 inches. You guys also got to think of the ground and different soil types behave different ways, but the ground's a big sponge. Yes, it is. It's going to hold all the moisture it can until it can't take no more, and then it'll give it to the tile. Yeah. So there's a lot of moisture absorbed in that ground before it ever makes it to that tile. So basically that tile deals with, with excess water is the best way to describe it. Yep. So that was a, uh, you know, we put that tile in, and, and the very first day, that thing was gushing water out. Um, it was pretty interesting. That one ditch, we put that double eight inch, kept caving in on us, because it was just that was a, quicksand type stuff. That was a nasty one. We took a big tree. I don't think I videoed. Did I video taking that big tree down there? Did you take it down or it fall over? It did fall over. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Aaron was standing there talking to you. It just fell over. <laughs> it about landed on the 140. Yeah. That was yeah. just about an insurance claim. Yeah. I don't think I did get it because of that. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. You dug great a little big bit. Old, of... Great big old sycamore tree, and we dug all the way around it, and I was going to push it over, and I went to set my camera up, and whenever I turned my back to it, it fell over on its own. It fell over. That's, that's crazy. I was, and that was a sycamore, and they can be a bummer. Oh, usually those things don't come out of there. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a mess. So the uh, next field, we, we tiled this spring. Yeah, we so this one here, um, if you guys go back on my channel, there's a flyover video of this field on the uh, review video I did about a year ago. Yep. 
uh, whenever I was going through reviewing different jobs. Yep. Actually, that Williams' field is on there with corn yes, in that is. review video. Yep. And there's a fly over this video. And this, uh, whenever I did the review video on the tile plow, mm -hmm. it was sitting on this job. Yep. But we'd done, we done filmed 100,000 feet of field tile, yep. so I didn't even film this one. Yeah, it was kind of a last minute thing this year. Uh, yeah, and it was uh, kind of a slam bam, thank yep. you, ma'am. You and Matt done it one day and, and was gone. So. Yeah. It was about 1,400 feet of tile we put in. And this one here was a groundwater issue. Yes. There was no grass waterways. Mm -hmm. There was no nothing. There was water. Whenever we say groundwater, uh, there was actually water coming up out of the ground. I call them winter springs, but this one here tend to be a summer spring. Yeah, this was a two, yeah, it was a year-round spring. So, this is just the big field, 1,400 feet of six inch, and your bill. So we got about 3,500 dollars in that field. Yeah, I mean, but I it's think, a, I think it's like be, a 20 acre field. And we only had to concentrate on two acres. Yeah, of, and we and I would say we probably pattern tiled that two acres. Yes. Yeah. You, we put some laterals in there. Yeah, and. To put that in perspective with the tile plow, Matt and I did this in about six hours. Yes. Yeah, you, you knocked it out pretty good. So, um, You know, in that two-acre pocket, we were raising 70 bushel corn. We had 28 bushel beans in there. I mean, this is if we could get it planted. And there's you, years you didn't get anything planted in there. There's, there's, there's holes in it. and If we did get it planted, it just rotted in the ground, the seeds. So. You come this year, you get 71 bushel soybeans off of it. That's two acres we're paying rent on, non-productive. We're actually losing money because we're putting the seed, we're putting the fertilizer, we're putting the chemicals there and not getting nothing off of it. I think one thing worth mentioning on this one is you also keep a landowner happy. Yes, yeah. And that's what a lot of them are is, uh, is the landowners appreciates what, we're, what right. we're in there doing. It adds value to their property. Right. And well, and you run. get you actually get a return on property you're renting, whether you get value out of it. Or yeah, not. if I can rent another five years, I've got my investment back. So you think that will be a that's pretty close to a one year payout on that? I come up with five point three. Five point three. Yeah. On the well, I guess it being two acres. What yep. is, is it a fifteen acre field altogether? Uh, it's about a twenty acre field there. Is that big? Yeah. You probably already said that. I wasn't paying attention, Chris. You know, I just took the soybeans we planted. We've started planting this field in twenty fifteen. We've had four years of beans on there, average 48 bushel. You take 22 at 71 bushel, that's a 23 bushel advantage. $14 beans, you know, that's, that's where we come up there. And the, it's a, a five year payback on that two acres. I didn't divide it amongst, um, amongst the, whole the whole farm. Yeah. 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 I'd say you're probably getting some benefit from that too, because that water was running all the way down across the top oh, of yeah. the Oh, yeah. The, the off fall of it was, once we cut it off, then it. If Are we going to talk about the neighboring field that didn't go so well? <laughs> I was going to leave that up to you. So that's, that's probably like a little two-acre triangle field. Oh, it's and that thing has been a bear for seven years for us. We've been farming it. So to give everybody a perspective how these lays, I'll try to get a visual for the people listening, but there's a 20-acre field, and there's a two-acre field, and there's a ditch that runs down between them. Yep. Same landowner. Yep. And the two-acre field had the same problem the 20-acre field did. It's got this spring right in the middle of it. It's got a spring that just pours out at the base of a hill. We plowed a six-inch tile above it, which usually if you come in above it, you can intercept it. You can cut that vein off. Cut yep. that vein off. We plowed a six-inch tile straight up through it. Yep. And then we plowed another six-inch tile over to another little wet spot, which is irrelevant to this conversation. That thing's still pumping water out of the ground. Where the water comes out of the ground, we've got two six-inch tiles within a foot of that and I'm talking, it's just poor now. And then we cannot get water in that tile. For, or the, top, the holes ain't big enough. And we even dug it up once, put a bunch of rock and gravel down in there. He, Matt dug it up. It smelled like rotten fish down there, he said. Yeah, so we're going to have to go back and um, the pipe's in the ground. We just got to figure out how to get the water in the pipe. We're going to figure out how to get the water in the pipe. Or find a vein. Or the, the soil's so tight, it's not moving yeah. far. Um, so, yeah, that one there is not... <laughs> <laughs> it's not paid off No, yet. it has not paid off. <laughs> it has not paid off. We'll, uh, we'll eventually get there one way or another. So, uh, But that kind of goes into, you know, grass waterways is obviously mm -hmm. one spot planning going to tile. Uh, this other field you're talking about is, is just the random wet spots. Hitting we do that a lot. Spots. Yep. Um, I can't remember the name of the video, but it's the one uh, up there by the water tire. Uh, where oh, okay. Yep. You guys, you guys literally had water coming out of the ground on top of a hill. Yes. 
Ain't that crazy? At top of the hill, it comes out. Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's uh, what happens around here. We got these tall hills, and the water gets underground and creates pressure. And it gets down in these low areas. Mm -hmm. It'll just find a random seam, pop right up out of the yeah, ground. I don't know if it's falling a rock ledge or a rock seam or something. It's diverting. A lot of times that Williams property is a prime example. A lot of times you get down there and there'll just be a random layer of rock down and there. Have just layer of just gravel. Just gravel. Yep. And it'll be following, following along with it, and you'll just sit there and chase it. Or, or ideally, you can get the tile laid in there right at that yep. level. Yep. That uh, that works works pretty pretty good. So I'm gonna. Do you dig it in? Do you plow it in? Do you trench it in? Oh boy. You're really gonna get the comments stirred up now, ain't you? <laughs> what works best in our area? All the above. All the above. There you go. Um so You don't see a whole lot of trenchers here in southern Indiana. A few. No, there's um what, is it Wagner's? They have one, don't they? Yes, they do. Yep. Um hey, Okay, so Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, obviously, in the beginning, we dug a lot of it in because it's the only method we really That's had. That's all we had, yes. Um, but it's slow. It's slow. You're disturbing a lot more ground than what you need to. Even with a two-foot bucket, we was... And uh, you, no matter how careful you backfill, you st there's a lot bigger risk to damage than that. But and that was another thing. There's a lot of... If I dig in, I will only put six inch or bigger in. Right. It just seemed like that four inch I've had the some six experience. six inch works really well. Eight inch gets big enough, but even like you said, you put eight inch in, if you collapse half of it, you still got a four yep. inch tile. Four inch is just so flimsy. I mean, it didn't take much dirt to Yeah, to collapse cover it up. It. So, uh, and we still dig some in based on the length, the location, how much is going in. And if there's equipment on the job. Already. If there's equipment on the job side, I mean, some places you just can't get the field tile, the plow into. Yep. Um, so then you get into trenching or plowing. Um, the biggest argument between trenching and plowing is smearing the side of the ditch. <laughs> uh, a lot of people say if you plow it in, you um, smear the sides of the ditch, which seals off all the water veins and the water can't get into the pipe. I can't speak for everybody's soil type, but the way our plow works, and that's why it's called a plow and not a ripper. I yeah. think that's a big misconception is that plow lifts that dirt so where it don't really it kind of breaks it up as it lifts it and it don't mm -hmm. really seal it off at least in our dirts and clays it don't seem to seal it off very well and like you said when we're hitting these random gravel shelves mm -hmm. you can't smear gravel I you mean, can't smear gravel if that water goes vertical down to hit a, a gravel seam then it's going to move horizontal and nine times out of ten um that water that water, if you smear it, that's still going to be the weakest point for it to blow back through and, and blow get back, back down to that yep. pipe. Um, some people like trenching because they can actually see the pipe and mm -hmm. they can confirm their grade and everything on it. Uh, I don't really see the advantage of that. I mean, if you see that tile plow and if you got grade control on it, yep. and what I have figured out is what we do is way more accurate than just about anybody else. What everybody else is happy with, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody else is happy with a couple inches. Like, we're down to a half inch. Yeah. Um, which, and Which is way more accurate than digging. I mean, we were right. pretty accurate digging, but you just get that It's not, I effect. mean, I don't care how good you yeah. are. You're gonna jump over a rock. You're gonna get in a hurry because you got yeah. footage to get in. Um, but what I really like about plowing is, uh, especially after going to make these connections and digging this up time and time uh -huh. again, man, that pipe lays in there nice. Because your plow's got that round bottom yeah. on the plow. So. Most, most tiles have a V bottom. And the, re the reason they have a V bottom is they can plow a different size pipe and use the same bottom. Same trench. And um, AS, is it ASE? ASM. ASEM standard said it has to be supported in three places. Okay. So the two bottom points count as one and the dirt on top count as one. Oh, see. Um, some people argue that us putting in six inch tile with an eight inch round bottom is an issue. But what we found is, as you tile through there, just enough dirt comes back around it. Sorry. It really, man, it- It seems like it hangs in there. It, I mean, it's just laying in there nice. Uh, it lays in there real yep. nice. So the way the tile's protected, I don't think we've had, we've been pretty fortunate. We've had, I think of one tile of yours, we had to go two tiles. Yep. One of them I know for sure, 
uh, it was that uh, one down there just on the just over the hill from your house uh, that wet spring we caught coming out of the woods there oh yeah yep uh yeah. we collapsed that one which that was a dozer i think we're done with the jerry did it with jerry, the, uh, yeah jerry we're gonna put that on jerry, that on jerry. <laughs> on jerry for sure. yeah i like when he went up that dry dam that back that dozer he went up a dry the dam and whenever he backed down the dozer come in and he just happened to be around right top yep. of the trench and then down here on werner's we had one yeah uh clemens got that on his clemens video. got that on his camera i don't know if we ever even collapsed it. i think we had a stick or something i think there. we had a stick or there was a varmint bore hole through the dam so knock on wood we haven't collapsed a whole lot of pipe yep. yeah we've done good but uh you go back and dig up them plowed in tight pipes yep. and man they they really look nice and the final thing on plowing uh, obviously a trencher makes less of a mess to clean up versus a uh uh digging digging excavator yep. but yep. man that tile plow yeah if you just let mother nature take care of you got time to let mother nature take care of it. man i think it lays back in there really it just, nice it's just like it folds back up and and if you want to hit it with a tillage tool yep. lightly or uh, I know the big job we did down at Rome, we didn't even probably put any tillage on it. We just yeah. walked him in with the, the, the uh, dozer, and then he ran a, uh, like, called a packer or something yeah. over it, called a mulcher. Um, we did pull a, a vertical tillage tool down just to help him out. But uh, but uh, that's... Um, it don't seem like there's as much settled swag with a, you know, come two years later. Right. You can't hardly tell what that plow's been through there. No, no. Which, because uh, some of these pipes we put in a while back, the, ex or the excavator, you can still kind of feel it. There's a little, there's a little settlement there, yeah. But the tile plow, you can't hardly see, um, can't hardly see anything. So, and the other thing is, um, there's no faster method than a plow. Oh, you was putting her in there. I mean, if, um, what I'm comfortable doing, is if we got to hold a really tight tolerance, I'm right at a mile an hour, uh, is where we can travel, yep. maybe just under. But like some of these, uh, like this last one we just did for you this fall, where we're plowing up the side Uphill. of the hill, I mean, you two can, and a half, you, three mile an hour. You walk right along with it, can't you? <laughs> we'll just, yeah. we'll just, as fast as we can get it to go down the pipe, I'll down, down the plow, we'll go with it. Now, that's all using judgment of where we're yeah. at like that main run we did up through there took yep. us a lot longer than those laterals because you know the grade control was a lot more crucial on it but and i don't know i've not had no experience with a trencher but the only th downfall i can see with a mounted plow is the steering yeah yeah other than that you have moved right along with everything yeah and so we get that comment a lot why don't you make it steer why don't you make it do like this like an udder or something yeah or but it's to keep it simple stupid method yeah. um yeah. just to put this in perspective a little bit i don't want to get too far off base here but if i bought a pull type plow you're looking at about 60 grand if i was going to put any type of grade control on you're looking at another 20 grand so you're gonna be 80 grand into this thing yep uh we got between the grade control and the plow itself we got about twelve thousand dollars in mind and I've not watched a lot of video. Can they turn some with a pull type plow? I mean, is there enough? They can turn a little bit better than I can just because they can. You, they got that they, hitch pin. Well, they got more leverage because they're oh, farther out in front yeah, of it. And they'll kind of scoot the tires. Yep. But, um, I mean, with a tractor, yes, because your front tires will pull you over. Pull but around. with a track machine, You're not much better. Yeah. But we don't, I can't make sharp turns, but I can make swooping turns. Yep. We've always got the excavator on the job. Yeah, you're, you're digging your start holes or putting your T's or your risers. It's just, just not a huge... You guys just grab that blade and It's just pull. not a huge deal to kind of hinge the dozer around a little bit, get you pointed in the right direction and... And take off. Take off with it. And that 850, that 850J pulls that, pulls that plow pretty well. But uh, it's, um, that's been a good addition yeah. to the fleet. Obviously, you know, I, I think in voice your opinion here, I think you even had this concern a little bit before... We had one big machine on the job, which was the 120 or the 140, yep. and everything else is just kind of support equipment. Obviously, now we got two big machines on the job. Yep. We got an excavator and a dozer, but I think we found that the pipe goes in fast enough, and there's less cleanup. That oh, it justifies the extra cost. You still got to find that like your last job you did up there for you. You know, I don't know if we would have pulled the dozer in just for that, but the dozer was already there. We had that clearing job because we had that clearing job, and that was the beauty of your. You're plowed. You can yeah. yank that thing on and off in no time and multi Yeah, we, uh, we pushed brush in the morning, put the plow on there, plowed the pipe in, pulled yep. the plow back off, and started building dams with it all in 12 hours. And I've got a number on that clearing job. Oh, up there? Yep. 
So, you know, we describe to see if it is five acres. I did not measure it out. Uh, so to reference this one, this is the one that Upstate Brush Control helped, helped on. And I think the title of the video on my channel is Jerry's back and he's gone crazy or oh, something. Oh yeah, he went at it. Because <laughs> he was murdering trees. So if we're at five acres, are we clear? You know, we we invested about thousand dollars an acre clearing so, that. Uh, I don't think it's five acres. So. I don't think it either. So that raises the price per acre. I think acre. it's 3.9. Did you do some measuring? <laughs> uh, John from Upstate Brush. Oh, did he? Okay. <laughs> but you know, we took, uh, for us, probably $3,000 an acre value ground. Yeah. And now it's, five or six thousand dollar an acre value so just what you paid to clear it by the the increase in value to the ground raise value you got your investment yep. back and not only that you had ground you could not use for nothing else oh it was worthless you can even use it for storage yeah yeah it was worthless it was brush so it's all about the return on investment there right. so it looks like we're spending a lot of money on tile and clearing and but there is a it's it's a return on investment somewhere for us well, obviously you wouldn't do it if there wasn't a reason, yep. um, a reason behind it. Um, I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but I'm going to ask you anyways. So the clearing job and the tile job we did this fall was the first job I can remember doing for you, big job, mm -hmm. on property you actually own. Yep. So a lot of those other jobs we do is on rented property. Yes. So do you protect yourself? How do you, I mean, I know I know you're a little bit different because you treat rented property as your own property yes. and try to take care of your landowners. Um, and that's one thing when we rent ground, we tell them we're going to treat it like it's our own. Right. You know, we don't go in and try to mine out nutrients. or. So by having this track record of investing in properties, mm -hmm. does that help you attract new landowners? I think it does. They see what you're doing see. or the word gets out. Yeah. Right. Because uh, I'm thinking of uh, the one property, we videoed that one, didn't we? Uh, where you planted corn out for the first time this year up there at uh, Mount Pleasant? Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, that was a little pain in the butt to get into. Yep. yep. Um, no, you was aiming for me to video it, and I never brought the camera. Is that what happened? Yeah, it didn't get videoed either. <laughs> everybody always says, there ain't, you video everything you do. There ain't nothing no. you do that you don't video. Here's your video. Yep. <laughs> yep. That one did not get videoed, but that, that turned out to be a very nice farm. And that was, uh, that had a split on it. Yep. Uh, what, there was only what, maybe 3,000 feet of pipe on it? There wasn't a whole lot. We went after a couple of risers and, and one, two wet spots right. or seeps. Uh, and the other guy that was farming it was a very well known farmer. Does a yes, great job. Does a great job. Uh, but you come in there and offer to do a few things and. Well, he got caught with his, his pants down, I guess. You know, he went in and done a bunch of tillage last spring, which softens the ground. Then he got stuck with late harvest and. He up. had some ruts cut in there, and landowner wasn't happy with it. So, which I mean, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Uh, we've done the same thing, but right. you just gotta you gotta know your landowners, pick your battles. And I knew this landowner don't like that. So, I mean, through that drought, I said we got to go there and get that harvested. Right. This landowner, you know, well, sometimes they don't say nothing. Maybe they're thinking something, but it's never brought something to. So, them. is that another advantage of tile? Is is giving you more of a window for harvest? Oh yes, fall? for sure. Yeah, keep that avoid dry those. Yep. I never even thought about that. To be honest with you, yep. Is, uh, and the no tail is a big thing. Just you keep that ground firm. I mean, we can and you pick your crops. You know, corn stubble, corn stalks is going to have more stuff to carry your weight versus bean stubble, bean. which gets really soft and spongy in a hurry. So that's if you guys don't know farming very well, that's why a lot of farmers try to get their beans in first because yep. you can harvest corn in a lot more adverse conditions. Oh, we can harvest corn in. Uh, we, we've showed corn snow. Well, you can show corn mud, wetter, wetter conditions for sure. A lot, and, another thing for the beans is the daylight. You know, right. you've got longer daylight. Corn, we can show at night, wet, rainy, mist, snow, and keep going late in the year on it. It don't matter if the plant's dry because it'll still feed through the it'll machine. It'll still feed through. Machine, all right. Yeah, I wish you would have videoed that one now because that one ended up being, I mean, you probably got close to a uh, minimum of five year investment on that one, maybe return. Oh, quicker than that, yeah. Quicker than that. And you know, he, uh, we've got a good deal on that. So every tile on every job has got a different uh, investment or yeah, different I arrangement, want, uh, I guess. Um, I don't want this to sound conceited, so stop me if it does, but uh, as you already pointed out, this landowner is pretty proud of his property yes, keeps it is. very well nice yep. and um 
I think that's what helps with you and I's relationship is you know I'm not going to go in there and destroy his property and get you started off on the wrong foot yep. right after the bat. I mean, I spent 30 minutes kind of talking through him what was yep. going to happen, what to expect. and I was more nervous on that job worrying about his driveway than I was worried about the field oh, because we goodness. wet and soft and I just... <clears throat> I had to back in, what, a quarter mile down a one-lane yeah. gravel yeah, road? And right into his front yard? Right into his front yard and unloading. I was a nervous wreck for a while, but he understood what was taking place and things. Well, and I tried to uh, I tried to tell him what to expect a little bit. Yeah. And I figured we had a one over by about halfway through. He realized we weren't a fly-by-night no, operation. We, and we done a pretty good job there. And he was pretty happy with everything, which goes yep. a long ways a, a lot of time. You know, time. that was going to start off with a two-year trial run plan and put investment into it, and we got a five-year deal out of it now. So Yeah, which I, I guess I'm trying to go around full circle here. I'm yeah. doing a horrible job at it, but that's the way you can almost use field tile as a sales tool. Yes, you can. Because, you know, you can go into these fields. You know what would happen if we put tile on them. You yep. can offer that as an option over maybe somebody else. Some we got landowners that pays part of it, half of it. Some landowners, we pay the full bill. But then you make adjustments on the rent and right. other arrangements offset that. So I should be putting a five-year contract probably on them to protect my butt. But farming's a... Um, I do a lot of things by handshake with a lot of my landowners. Farming's a little bit different, though. The, I mean, everybody... It's a pretty close-knit community, and it's cutthroat, but yep. everybody within reason respects everybody's territories that respects makes, other people. it's, it's yeah. really up to the landowner to make yeah, the other landowner makes the move yeah yeah the landowner yeah. makes the decision um and you know i i work for a lot of different farmers around here and i just kind of keep my nose down and keep doing what you need to do do what i need to do yep. and keep Completely. everybody keep everybody uh happy so I'm going to switch subjects on you here a little bit, and I don't know when you guys will see this on the podcast, probably sooner rather than later, but we actually did about a seven-acre um, land clearing job on our personal farm. Oh, yep, yep. Um, and I know Chris is nice enough to share some of his numbers, but one thing we usually don't do on the channel is share the cost of stuff Yep. because I don't feel like that's my number to give out. That's actually the customer's number yep. to give out. And I don't want to be blabbing the customers' numbers and, and, and a whole different things. So uh, you guys will see coming up on my channel fairly soon. We did uh, seven acres. Um, and this is a little bit skewed because we actually started this job seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it was a long time coming on this job, wasn't it? But uh, what we did this time going forward was uh, $22,000. Okay. So it cost us $22,000 to take seven acres that was non-tillable, non-farmable, hillside, valleys, just a mess, and turn it into farm ground. Yep. And a lot of the money on this one was not clearing the trees and the stumps. It was actually moving dirt. Uh, yeah, because you had some of the topsoil already pulled back. Yeah, well, it was, we moved about 15,000 yards of dirt. We moved a lot of dirt to make this happen. Um, and I was going over our financial plan with our, uh, for the guy, Chris, for you guys that don't know, Chris don't farm our family farm. Your family farm here. Uh, the family has about 500 acres we rent out to another individual uh, we have for years. I don't have control over that, and, and they've done us a good job. Yep. It's kind of like respecting territories. Yep. Now, the property that Jen and I own, you do farm. We was already farming it when you bought it. Right. So so uh rick my uncle rick which runs the family farm now and then uh, garrett which is the the guy that farms our farm which chris is friends with also uh we were just kind of running some numbers for the heck of it and we are set up on a one-thirds two-thirds mm -hmm. so um we own the property garrett pays all the input cost and then at harvest time we get one-third of the crop they get two thirds of the crop. We've done that for years and years since 1982. Um, and um, the farm actually paid the harp, our family farm actually paid for 100 percent of the work. It's just the way the the arrangement, the arrangement worked. Well, you're going to go return on it, also like yeah. well, to your point, we took 1,500 to 2,000 dollar farm ground or swamp ground, swamp ground, which is in a floodplain and can be yeah. used for anything else. 
it was just you had to buy it because it came with everything else and turned it into four thousand to forty five hundred dollar farm ground productive ground yep. so right off the bat you got that investment and running some numbers with rick if you take the last five years average and apply it to that seven acres it's four and a half year return is it? yeah it seemed like a lot of our numbers you know it's going to run around that five year return right some tall or clear um, and then again coming up on the channel we did another job for garrett i don't want to say the actual price of that because that's garrett's garrett, yep. but it's very similar in price and it was about four acres um so let's just say for random numbers it was 20 grand for four acres yep he reaps 100 percent of the benefits of that yep and he's he's hoping to be at a three and a half year return on that um so and then again the property value the property value is a hidden, a hidden and, and you can drive down the road here and just see the i've heard people talk about yours i haven't been down here past this one but the my brother john went by and he said boy it makes a difference down there. <laughs> <laughs> it takes uh well and you go back to efficiency so we own a field, Garrett owns a field, we own a field. He can drive a mile and a half with the planter down the river. Yeah. Never have to pick up and turn around and come back. That's efficient. Yeah. That's efficient. You can cover a lot of ground in a, in a short period of time. Um, so that's, you know, we're not out here killing trees or taking out swamp yeah. ground for no reason whatsoever. Um, and I'm going to translate this into one more thing. You know, I just posted the video about removing the beaver dams. Yep and uh people are getting all over me about their creatures and they need to have habitat too and they need to do there's this places that. for them there's places for them and here's what it comes down to they had seven acres on our farm flooded it probably costing us about 20 grand a year mm -hmm. they ruined probably three hundred thousand dollars worth of timber so if you like them so much let me know where you live. Yeah, we're, I'll set them up in your bedroom. Let them live there for we're free. We're trying to trap them and get them. <laughs> well, let them live there for free, not pay yeah. rent, and keep taking money out of your pocketbook. Yeah, we've, you know, I've been farming this area ever, born and raised here. I don't ever remember the last five years beaver damage has really ramped up. I don't ever remember being beavers around. You know why I thing. think it is? Because the DNR has started forcing them out of the government ground. Oh, have they? Uh, they've they've done a lot of different things over here at Rainbow Pay Lake and Mogan Ridge. They've done a lot of stuff up around, um, is it Dry Lake? Down? Dry Lake, yeah. Um, which yeah. one's down there by Carter Valley? I call it Dry Lake or Walk-In Lake. Dry Lake. Yeah. They've been uh, been down there. They're causing a lot of damage on the on the National the Farm, or National Forest, Hoosier right. National Forest, and they've been trying to relocate them. And for us down here on the river, uh, the river is a highway farm. Yes. Oh, yeah. They're so we're always highway. going to have them down here. It is what it is. But with that, with you know, and I try to do the most humane way possible. I'll dig their dam out and give them a chance to swim on. Yeah. They don't want to swim on. And um, about 50 50, about 50% 50 of the time they'll leave and relocate themselves. Yep. And the other 50% of the time you got to, well, go against their will. <laughs> you know, we've got two creeks, uh, Deer Creek, which runs past years in Jenna's property. Mm -hmm. The uh, locks and dams keeps the water Back actually up. backed up year round, so they don't even need to build a dam. They're just there. But they make slides or slicks out there, and the you know if we got a cornfield there, they can wipe out. We got a three acre field on you and a creek bottom. And if we show half of it, sometimes we're lucky. From the beavers. From the beavers. It's crazy. Eating corn. And then they go all the way up Oil Creek, which comes off the Ohio River, and they're up there probably fourteen or fifteen miles. Just anywhere we get corn along there, they're just, they cut corn like it is timber. And I mean, they, and it's their food source. I did the same thing to uh, Garrett down here on that field across from camp from us. Oh, yeah. They, they wiped out that whole bottom half. You yeah. see them sliding up and down the banks and just. Yeah, they just make slicks. It just well, they like also a, use the corn stalks as their dam. Oh, is it dam? I've yeah. heard food, but yeah, it looks like a big old slip and slide for them when they go back in the creek. So. And I, I have nothing against the beavers. If they want to mind their own business, they can live for free. But as soon yep. as they start costing us money, uh it, it starts to become an issue and and if they're honestly i've left dams down here for years because if they're minding their own business they're back they're, back and, they're back and water up too far right because like that big ditch going down to camp yep i can build one heck of a dam in there and not cause anybody any trouble but once it gets to a point to where it starts taking up farm ground yeah and, and it may take so. them two or three years to get to that point so we'll let them go as long as we can we're not completely inhumane don't have any feelings but at some point enough's enough yeah but you know, we got squirrel damage, coon damage around the edge of the woods. You get rabbits don't do much. Deer is our biggest. Especially the beans. Especially beans. They can wipe out. 
we've got a uh, 70 acre farm in Crawford County that's surrounded like 6,000 acres of woods. You don't plant beans on that farm. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can wipe out 70 acres of beans in no time. Ain't that crazy. So, and we did get uh, what they call depredation permits where we could go through, you know, May, June, and control July. We've got so dang busy, we can't even yeah. control that anymore, so. Uh, so I guess that just puts you planting corn up there most of the time? We plant corn and we're gonna try uh, Milo or what we call sorghum. So we're gonna try that this year and see how they, see how they do with it. But for some reason, corn can outgrow their, their eating habits and, and go ahead and, and produce. So. Well, can't you, uh, like a corn stalk, can't you like nip it off at the ground whenever it's like this tall and it'll turn around and come back up? Oh yeah, we've had cows and uh, you know, once a corn's growing point is, is underneath the ground for a good while, you can, cow can mow it off and man, it'll just come Pop right, right back up. Yeah. So it's a lot more resilient to than a bean. Than a bean. And a bean will grow, but I don't know, corn's just more more acceptable to wildlife, except around the edge of the woods, you get those deer, or get squirrels, or coons, you know, they can run up a stalk and yank an ear off and they go with it, but it's very minimal around the... Yeah. But yeah, beavers, is, in the last five years, the beavers has drove us nuts, so... Yeah, people, I mean, it's crazy, people don't think about beavers coming into a cornfield yeah. and wiping it out, but they'll... They will do it. it. Looks like a Solly's chopper went through and just little <laughs> stubbles all the way down the road. They just whack her off. So, well, hopefully that covered uh, covered a lot of the highlights on the on the field tile. So, so there's, there's one thing we didn't talk about that always comes up. Why don't we put gravel around the pipe, and how do we keep the mud out of it? Well, the tile is uh, for the mud issue or silt. You know, it's a fine. They call what they call. It? Fine knife slip. They slipped. call it micro knife slipped. I mean, there are some times you almost got to bend the pipe to even see. So the way, the, the theory behind that, and I'm sure somebody can explain it better than me, is the uh, surface tension, the capillary tension of the water actually has to be broke to get it to go through that slit. Yep. So it's small enough that it has to have a little bit of pressure to, to get it forced it in. into the pipe, um, which in a lot of ways keeps all the silt out of it. Your biggest concern at that point is you get enough silt around the outside of it that it can't you know, get to that. The days we used to dig it in with the track hoe and the trench fill halfway full of water and your pipe would float and mm -hmm. you could stand on this tile, hold it in the water, you can stand on it 10 minutes and get off of it. Nope, it's still empty. Back up. It just ain't got the pressure to get the water in there. So it's hard for the silt to get in. Uh, I guess some silt could get sent down yep. some risers, but usually if water is going down the riser, there's flow. And that's what I was going to say. We get so much flow with these six, eight inch rains. Right. We've got tiles that's just gushing, you know, on some of And rains, usually, whenever, that's the purpose of the retention area, is the water comes in there, a lot of heavy silt will fall out fall of it out. before it ever goes in the pipe. If you let it sit there for just a few minutes, it it'll don't a take slow long. release. Yeah, it'll, it'll settle out. So. It don't take long. And what amazes me is uh, just like down here a couple of days ago on our farm, we dug up a clay tile. It's probably been there since the 60s. You know, dug that in with shovels, some of them probably. <laughs> Cleanest could be inside. I think that's something. Cleanest can be inside. Yeah. And I think you got to keep a certain slope. Now, if you're running tile fairly flat, you know, a four-inch tile, and you get a four-inch dip in it and back up, yeah, that gooseneck probably is gonna. It becomes a trap. It's gonna become a silt trap. You gotta keep for you that water time. moving, which goes back to the plot, the importance of the grade control on a plot. You gotta keep it great. And if you're running any minute slope, it's gonna keep itself flushed out. Right, right. Uh, you know, I know out west in some places they do run some tile, run some gravel around uh -huh. it, but around here we see no benefit of it. And could you imagine what it'd do to your tile cost? Oh, you couldn't afford it with rock being delivered. Between labor and materials, it would triple your cost. I don't know how you... There's ways they do it. I know they put it in, but it's not been a benefit for us around here. It's not yeah. like we're trying to... You're better off putting... Like our basement, right. our repair job on your videos. We're trying to get water to go 10 feet down quick. Yeah, gravel. Right. The two-acre field we got problems with, we might have to dig it up and throw some gravel 
underground basin in there. But Chris's idea for that is to put a riser underground down flat. I want to put a riser <laughs> underground that's got some holes in it and cover it up with gravel. And I'm not going to argue with you. Obviously, my two repairs that yep. <laughs> You've done had two shots at it. <laughs> I've, I've shot all my bullets. But I've done it out. You know, in the years, even the clay tiles never been graveled. It's, I don't see a, I don't see there the need is, for the added uh, expense. There is millions of feet of clay tile on the ground around yeah. here, and a lot of it still works. Yeah, we got a lot of it on our farm down here; it still works. We had farms with it on there. Yeah, for sure. We uh, nine right times out of ten, the clay tile don't fail. It's people destroy them. Yeah, and yeah. cause them to fail yeah. is what ends up uh, what ends up happening to them. So, and the uh, clay tile, they're they're only like two foot pieces. Mm -hmm. And then they just, when they bury them in the ground, they just leave a half inch gap between those seams. And yep, that's where the water gets into. So here we got a half inch gap keeping no mud in them, and we got a really fine knife slit. Yeah. And we're, the somehow other, we're going to get sealed in the there. The other thing is, is the ground, after the pipe is in the ground, everything's backfilled and it's not disturbed anymore, the ground itself is a filter. Yes. The water moving through the ground is clean. Yep. Yep. Uh, so. Clean. There, there's no concern there of it. It's not continuously carrying silt to the pipe. The, the, the water ground, moves so slow, it ain't got, it ain't moving dirt with it. It's right, just a small, especially like we hit one of those gravel seams. That's just a natural, yeah, a natural filter. So, uh, yeah, we don't sock it, we don't gravel it, we don't do anything. Uh, now, there's places in the nation they've got to, right? But they're they're soil type. I know, of. like out west in what they call the peat ground. Of the peat moss or something. They have to do a whole lot. Uh, and I think it's just because the stuff in it's finer. I don't know. It might be. I don't know the exact science. Uh, exact science Man, behind this. A... But I look at like what Randy the Master Pipe Layer and those mm -hmm. guys do up in Minnesota and that nasty stuff. And That's like a gumbo type stuff there. Plow it right in. Plow it in. Uh, I've seen some videos. They're going like crazy up there in this frozen ground. Oh, I bet. Yeah. They're loving every minute of it up there. Usually yep. they're dealing with mud, but... Uh, but no, it's, uh, we, man, I can't remember of digging up a single pipe that's failed because of silting. I haven't either. Issues. I'm sure I've got one we might tackle this spring. I don't know if it's silt issue. Um, I've done put it in twice. Oh, I think I it's backfilled because it's like 16 foot trench, deep trench. I think we keep collapsing it, trying to get it backfilled back with a track hole. For the record, I haven't worked on that one. You yet. have not worked on that. <laughs> I put it in once myself with a rented track hole. I had our other uh, dirt guy put it in. That's, and we, your, we uh, failed that's your two and out scenario there. Yeah, that's my two and out scenario there. I, <laughs> I throw in the towel. I've got a riser that about six inches is out of the water from the rest of it's got a pond around it. I can't get the water out of the field. <laughs> So, all right, we'll wrap this one up here if you got some other stuff. There, there is one uh, farm I wish you had some previous data on, and we may be able to get some data on yep. it, I don't know for sure, but it was the big tile job we did this spring. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, well, this was my first year farm. That's... Right. Um, but um, uh, this is uh, Matt's farm. I'm sure he's probably listening. Yep. But um, that farm had some clay tile on it, long time ago uh was rented to a different farmer and for years there was parts of that farm that was never farmed yeah that old blue blue clay blue muck right we went through and but uh we we put in was it seventy thousand feet of pipe down there you very well could have yeah, i don't know what uh, but what amazed me about that one is uh especially in some of those fields plowing across them because we were running some long runs it's how much the dirt changes in a field it changes pretty quick, don't That's it? That's crazy. Uh, everybody thinks that that field, you take one sample out of it and you know what it is, but it's, yep. it's insane how much the dirt changes going across the field, and, which uh, obviously you guys can see on your yield maps. Oh, yeah, yield maps for sure. You know, a lot of people want to go back to the soil map. Um, every county or every area has got a soil map, you know, the nation has done, but that was done in the... 40, 50, 60 years ago. Well, especially you know. down there when most of it floods. Yeah, so it changes so. quite a bit. So yeah, you can definitely see the soil type change, even digging how fast it changes from one right. drop to the other. So, But that that farm down there, I don't know, it's, let's call it 300-ish 300 300 acres, but um, I know the yield wasn't the best overall because it was your first time on it, but mm -hmm. you were able to at least get it all planted and harvested. Yes. Yeah, which was a does. huge improvement over 
years uh, past. Years past. So yeah, uh, some of that was some pretty mucky, nasty stuff up in there. Yeah, well, the first time you looked at that farm, another farmer actually turned it down because it was too yeah, wet. Too wet. They were trying. Now they've done. Matt had said several years ago, trying to do some very sophisticated surface draining. Yeah, and there was remnants of that. Though. Yeah, you know they had some. It was crowned and and ditched and trying to do some surface, but they had so much tillage work in the past year that that surface draining got messed up and started to cause us some problems, I think. That goes back to everything's got to work as a system. You know, you put in this precise ditch for a mile, and yep. one guy comes across the wrong way with a disc. Well, you know, too, when they put that in, they probably pulling six, eight-foot equipment. Right. Now, modern-day equipment comes in with a 30-foot disc. It's hard to get turned around or Going work with way. that same slope, you know. So. Well, I'm sure as time goes on, we'll get more and more data on that. But um, that one there was actually, he actually had a price of pattern tile at Hope yeah. Farm. And it was way up there. Yeah, well, what we did was a fraction of the cost. Yep. But I, it's like I told Matt, we're a fraction of the cost, and we're not going to get you 100% of the benefit, but if we get you two-thirds of the way there for a fraction of the price. And the beauty of the tile is you can put a part of it in. Yeah, to go back now. Let the ground tell you what it needs, or what you've, right. or how you've healed it, or not healed it. Dig in, add to it, and run some take more minerals off, off of take it. Take off you know? again. Yeah, you can always add to it. I mean, there ain't no sense of throwing money out there; it's not needed. But no, you can always and take steps well, out obviously, of it. Matt already saw a huge benefit this year. I'm curious to see what because uh, we we literally put that tile in. You're planting right behind us, and I don't. I think it takes a personally for me. It takes a year for that ground to heal. Right. Where we've plowed and, and getting the wormholes, getting the micro nutrients or not the micro, get the microbes working right. And, right, because all those the, the worms, the crawfish, the whatever's in the ground, they all dig tunnels to that tile and, and, let, and let's, release that ground water. move, out. yeah. So, but well, Farmer Chris, you got anything else you want to add to this conversation? No. Since you're the self-proclaimed tile expert. <laughs> hard knocks, school <laughs> of hard knocks. I think me and you both started learning the same time. We've come a long way in a short yeah. period of time, though. Um, I think that first year we put in about 5,000 feet. Yep. I think last year I put in about 130,000 feet. You know, just I had my theories on where tile need to go, and you come put your – you look at it, and, well, maybe we need to do this because I don't have my notes with me. Sometimes I've got tile going everywhere. And, yeah. Well, and, first thing and I, I get, get fittings there, and we don't use half the fittings. I got the wrong fittings. <laughs> the first thing I had to teach Chris is you don't dig up middle of a ditch. <laughs> yeah, don't dig up middle. I want to go right middle of a ditch. <laughs> no, we're not going middle of a ditch, Chris. <laughs> but you know, in my theory too, it seems to be working. If we're doing an erosion problem, if that's where it started washing at, that's where yeah, we put the first riser, riser because it's not washed from there up. You know. Yeah. And if we're doing a long run down a ditch, I've used the theory of about every 75 to 100 feet. Well, we need some to of that, um, you're completely correct on that's the easiest way to figure out where you need the first risers, where's yeah. the erosion start. Yep. And then it kind of comes down to how wide your equipment, where's your, where's your pass where's at. Where's your pass is at, yep. So if you can go three planter widths to the next one, which would mean, what, 90 yeah. feet, um, that kind of helps you out a little bit. Because at that point, it don't really matter if it's 10 feet one way or another. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then... I don't know. We usually go, what, every 100, 150 feet? I'm going to say every 100 feet, you know, between risers. Sometimes we go far. It depends on, I'm going to say, the, the slope. Yeah, and how many different valleys are feeding, feeding into that into one. It. Yep. One main valley. But I'm sure there'll be plenty more field tile videos coming up. A couple of the other videos I mentioned will be coming on my channel soon um, of the uh, work we did on our property and the neighbor's property down there. Uh, I know I've talked to some other farmers. We worked for um, Hauser and Cleavings and Garrett and, and we made some massive improvements. Uh, you might have got yourself into something you don't want to get get started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Farmer Chris, I've become the local <laughs> tile expert. But yep, I wish I had uh, Garrett on here to talk about uh, down there below Herbie's house or Herbie uh, Hermes house. Hermes house. Boy, I went down to visit you that day. That was a swamp down there. Well, and to your point, uh, they had tried to dry it up twice themselves. Why is that twice a common thing? You try uh, it twice and you throw in the towel to somebody else. <laughs> uh, but the third time we went in there, and that one is on video, <clears> the <throat> third time we went in there and, and plowed up to that spring, and Garrett said it's never been drier down there. It's <laughs> it's working working pretty good. I mean, well, the same one that we had to repair that uh, Jerry caved in with the dozer. Mm -hmm. That was a spring run down through that field that we just right. couldn't farm with no more, you know. 
<coughs> excuse me. Man, yeah. that thing just kept gushing water the whole time we was working on them. Yeah, well, um, talking about plowing through rock seams is uh, Edwards is up there. <coughs> oh, that was rock, wasn't it? <laughs> Everybody always wants to know how, what happens whenever you hit rock with the tile plow. Boy, you, and you can feel it as an operator, but man, those slabs there, we parked it that Saturday or whatever. Just... And you can get through it to some extent. Yep. But honestly, if you can come across the ground, if you hear that rock, if you can just stay, stay right, right above on top it, of that's it, that's where the that's water's going to stop. That's and, the sweet spot because the water stops moving down and starts moving Move horizontal, horizontal. Yep. and you you got it. But we didn't plow, but 1,500 feet on there and had a six inch pipe running half full. Oh yeah, it gushed some water out. It was it was crazy. So it's interesting to watch tile and water work underground. So it's uh, in at least I don't have to plant rice if we get it tiled. <laughs> I just want to caution everybody. What we do here works for us. Works for this county. It don't, mind, it don't mean it's going to work two counties over. It don't mean it's going to work in Minnesota. It don't mean it's going to work in California. It don't mean it's going to work in Oklahoma. Yep. Well, we rambled on so much, we melted the camera down now. <laughs> we outlasted the GoPro. Yeah. I don't know. It's all about smoking over there. Well, I hope it cools <laughs> down. So. But uh, I think that's going to be a wrap on this one. Yeah, that one's, uh, that one's a good one there. So Anything else you'd Answers like to a add? lot of questions we, we've been getting. So Yeah, we get tons of comments about why we do it, how we do it, what's yep. the return, uh, what's the benefits, how does it work, yada, yada, yada. I think we covered them all. If we didn't, comment down yep. below. We'll try to catch them in the comments. I know you watch the comments. Yep. So. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. So, so, does I, so do I. We're going to try to get this one up on uh, all the other platforms as well, but it'll for sure obviously be on YouTube, so check it out. A few points from Perfect. Got any questions or any suggestions for some future episodes, you can email us at a few points from Perfect at yahoo.com. We're going to grab us some supper and maybe do another one. Knock them out. Thanks for listening, guys. Yep. Thank Later. you, guys.